President-elect Donald Trump picked billionaire Jared Isaacman to head NASA. In a post on Truth Social, Trump said Isaacman will drive NASA's mission of discovery and inspiration, paving the way for groundbreaking achievements in space science, technology, and exploration. You see the post there. You were selected by Trump to head up NASA and lead and lead that. And then a couple days before your confirmation, they pulled it. The search for NASA's new administrator is on. President Donald Trump announced he was pulling his nomination for billionaire Jared Isaacman just days before his possible confirmation. West 2 Space Coast reporter Megan Moriarty explains what this could mean for the future of NASA. Mr. Isaacman, um, you have deep personal and financial ties to Elon Musk. And according to a recent Wall Street Journal report, Musk personally asked you to lead NASA. You will follow the law. Under every circumstance, you will follow the law. I appreciate that commitment. You've been up there. You've seen the Earth, you know, from an aspect that not very many people get to see it from. Is that experience you know, when we start sending masses of people up just, you know, just for tourism. I mean, is that is that going to change humanity, do you think? Did it change you? Back at home, we all have a lot of work to do, but from here, Earth sure looks like a perfect world. They call this the overview effect of like when you go into space and you look back on your home planet, you know, how does it how does it change you? I think no doubt you are you are changed in some way or another. I do think a lot of what people say is kind of almost like recycled talking points from uh, you know the 60s and 70s. I'm gonna step off the limb. It's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. How do you think NASA, I mean, you had mentioned earlier that the SpaceX shouldn't be the one to have to head all of this up. Where does, where does someone like NASA fall into play? Are there going to be refueling points? Are we going to stop on the moon? I mean, what, what are the, the big problems that we need to solve? I understand that you met with Elon Musk at Mar-a-Lago in late 2024. Is that correct? Uh, so, no, Senator, I was in Mar-a-Lago uh, to be interviewed by the President of the United States. I've got a question that a lot of people have interest in. We talk a lot about the moon landing. Was it real? Did it happen? I want to ask you, why have we not been back to the moon? Why has man not been back to the moon? I think there's two... There's two problems that we're gonna have um, in order to make that dream a reality. One of my crew members from Polaris Dawn was with Kid and I. She, uh, she played the violin in space. Under your leadership, America will beat China back to the moon. That's important. Why do you think that your name was pulled? Why did they pull you right before the confirmation? It's just so weird that we haven't been back there to explore. The world is a more interesting place when you can journey among the stars. Well, Senator, I, I think right now NASA has a pretty extraordinary budget. I, I believe it's close to every federal law enforcement agency combined times two. We can have multiple space exploration missions at once and try and solve the space economy in low Earth orbit, sir. Even with budget cuts, you'll be able to do that. Which, by the way, in itself is another travesty that we went 10 years in this country with having zero capability to put astronauts into space. We had to send all our astronauts via Russia. So you think of all the things of SpaceX and Elon and, you know, the good and the bad, they returned operational capability to the United States for sending astronauts into the high ground of space. What was the first mission about? First mission was just showing it could be done. You know, the crew we assembled, which was 
a really inspirational crew, and I didn't know any of them. It all came together, you know, essentially with, with luck, the stars aligned, where our medical officer was Haley Arsenault, childhood cancer survivor, 10 years old, has bone cancer. All she wants to do is live. That's exactly what she did. She beat the odds, she grew up, she became a physician assistant at St. Jude, never knew she was gonna get a phone call one day that said, hey, you wanna go to space? The goal was just to show it could be done. You know, you pick these people at random, get it right, don't screw up. Uh, you screw up, you set back this whole idea of commercial space for decades, but you get it right and all the fun missions will follow. <laughs> What's it like being up there for the first time? Uh... It's still like getting struck by lightning. 